This is technically a sculptor's technique, but if I'm gonna make a circle out of clay, I'm gonna use the thing that literally spins around in a circle. Hello you dirty potters, how are you today? Today I want to show you guys how to make a ring out of clay. Don't get too excited, it's not the kind you put on your finger. Now making a solid ring out of clay is one of my favorite techniques to do because you can essentially do anything with it that you want afterwards. You see this decorative lidded piece right here? Well I sculpted this from making a ring on the wheel. All I did was make a ring, let it dry a little bit, cut it at a certain angle, and then put it on the very top of a lid so that it acts like a handle. Although this is my favorite application of using this technique, there's a bunch of different ways that you can actually use this technique because you're essentially getting the full circle. You take little bits of those circles and you do whatever you want with them. Heck, you can even make a little handle out of those pieces for your cups. Learning how to make this ring out of clay on the wheel is also the precursor that you're gonna need in order to learn how to not only make test tiles, but learn how to do the very minimum for making a double walled vessel. So today, we're gonna go over this one basic tool. To be honest with you, this is an extremely easy technique, but there's a couple things that most people don't know about this technique, which make it a little bit harder to produce. So today, we're gonna go over some of the misconceptions and what you might need to make a solid ring out of clay on the wheel. The first thing that you're most likely going to need is a bat and some bat pins. Now, if you don't know what a bat is, or you don't know how to use one, I've already made an episode on that, I will link it down below for you. But if you don't have a bat and bat pins, you can just make sure that this is the very last thing that you throw on the wheel head for the day and let it dry overnight because after this you're gonna have to let this dry unless you want to morph the ring that you just made because it is going to be wet and fresh clay it's kind of like making a plate on the wheel like you could throw a plate without a bat you just need to make sure it's the last thing that you throw for the day now before we get started there's one main problem that everyone always messages and emails me about and I feel like we should address that problem before we even learn how to make this ring Now before we get started, I want you to notice something. This is essentially a ring. It's thick, yes, but this is pretty much a donut or ring that I made on the wheel. The thing that I see most people mess up on is that they try and make this the base of the ring they're trying to make, and then they try and stretch this much further than they've set the base. When you do that, things don't really work out as planned. You see this ring right here is already attached and stuck to the very bottom of this bat right here, but only on this part right here. And if I try and move it past itself, well it's gonna have to reapply itself or re-stick to this part of the bat and so on and so forth as I move along. This is a common mistake that most people make because if you try to do that, It's not going to stick to the rest of the bat in the way that it did when you first set and centered this down. And the mistake that I see most people make is trying to stretch this donut or ring way past the limits in which they set the base. So before we start, I need you to understand that whatever you are going to set the base at is how big you're going to make the ring. Otherwise, you're essentially going to wobble it off straight off the bat or the wheel head. I mean, it works sometimes, but you're honestly just still asking for trouble at this point. Now that we got that out of the way, we can actually get started. First, let's center our clay. Potter tip. Keep in mind that I said that the base of whatever you just centered is pretty much gonna be how round or how big your ring is gonna be. And this is kind of a small ring, and this is kind of a lot of clay for such a small ring. If you don't use up all the clay in this little ball right here, you're essentially gonna have a super thick ring, and I don't really want that. So to fix this, I just wanna spread the clay out nice and thin and make the base way wider than it is right now. Now in order to do this, I like to wet the blade of my fist right here and just squish it down and make sure that it's nice and flat. This is also kind of the same way you make a plate, honestly. You see, now we have a nice big base for our ring. And instead of that ring being only this big, now it's gonna be this big. 
But trust and believe, if I tried to pull this little tiny ring out to a big ring right here without making sure that this surface is sticky right here, the ring would have flew everywhere like Sonic the Hedgehog. Once we've gotten it to the correct size or base that we want our ring, now all we really have to do is open up this pot just like a normal piece of pottery. The only difference is this time we're going all the way down to the bat or wheel head. Remember, we're making a ring, so we don't really have to care about the bottom. Potter tip. Sometimes I use a little bit too much clay, and that becomes no more apparent than when you start opening up and digging all the way down to the wheel head or the bat. You'll get this giant lump of clay right here that you don't really need. This is the stage in which you want to get your pin tool and just cut that right off. This is all excess clay that you don't need just because you used a little bit too much clay than you actually needed for the job. Once you've opened up your ring, go ahead and push these two sides in just a little bit. Don't push too hard and make sure you leave enough clay down here because this is still binded to the wheel head and or bat and that means it needs enough surface area to actually bind to those things. So make sure you don't push too hard. You see, it's just like pulling a little tiny wall or making a very, very shallow bowl. The only real difference is that you're digging all the way down to the wheel head or the bat instead of leaving clay down there so that it has a nice catch. And there we go, we almost have our ring. Now here comes the difficult part. You see, this isn't a completely circular ring yet. The top right here might be nice and smooth, but we need this bottom and this top to match pretty well. If you take this off the wheel and try and sculpt or alter a pot with it, it's not gonna bode too well. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna straighten out this bottom and the inside of the bottom right here. But Dante, how do we do that? Just give me a second, I'm gonna show you. At this point, you can do one of two things. You can either use your wooden knife or you can use your rib. I prefer to use a wooden knife and some people prefer to use a rib too. Don't worry, I'll show you how to do both. All you have to do is take your wooden knife and cut this part off just like you were cutting the skirt off of a normal pot that you'd be throwing. Potter tip that you should have totally already known from past videos. Never dig your wooden knife straight into the clay body if you're trying to cut the skirt off. Make sure it's angled a little bit this way. If I put it this way, it'll probably gouge into the clay like this, and you don't really want that. So to get the opposite of that effect, you essentially want to tip it right in the way the wheel is already running, so it runs right past the tool nice and smooth. Start up here, which is a little bit higher than we normally do, but we really don't need all this excess clay, and just push straight down. And as you do this, the clay should just naturally come off. And by the time you touch the wheel head, you just let go of the wheel. Sooner or later, this tool should touch the wheel head, and when it does, make sure you hear that scrapey sound. Once you hear that scrapey sound, and you see the bottom of the wheel head or bat all the way at the bottom make a complete ring all the way around, you can simply cut this part off, or leave it here, spin the wheel, and it'll come off naturally. See? Gotta get rid of this, this looks like grandma's curtains. Now in order to do the inside, you're pretty much gonna do the same exact thing. Go all the way on the inside, but don't push too hard. You'll end up getting rid of that connection in between the clay and the wheel head or the bat. After you've cleaned up your outside and your inside, you can just smooth it out one more time. Potter tip! You've already made a pretty good ring, and at this point, all you have to do is take this, tip it upside down later on, and trim it. But if you don't want to not only go through those steps, you also want kind of a lower to the ground ring. All you have to do is smooth it out one more time, but put a little bit more pressure as you smooth it out. Put a little bit of water right here, get my sponge, make a tiny little arc with it, and just push down as I'm smoothing out the top. This will bring all the clay a little bit closer to the wheel head or the bat and make a smaller ring, or at least something that's nice and compact. And if you push down a little bit close to the wheel head, it'll also clean up these edges a little bit and make it look a little more symmetrical. You see, there you go. Now it's a little bit more squatty and it looks a lot more like a donut or a ring. If you made a little bit of extra clay down here from the shortening process, all you have to do is get your wooden knife and just smooth it out one more time. And there you go. Now you just have to let it dry like this. Go ahead and get your wire tool and just run it right across the bottom of this really quick. 
If you do it properly, this won't move the ring very much, but it will break the connection in between the clay and the wheel head or bat, which will make it much easier to come off when it dries. And as long as you don't move or morph this too much, you're essentially good to go. It'll dry in this perfect little ring form. Keep in mind that this isn't a lot of clay. This is a very small amount of clay. And this is going to dry up way faster than something that's much bigger wood. So we're just gonna put this in the sunlight for maybe about 30 minutes and it'll dry out really quickly. That's the main reason I used a bat, baby. 20 minutes later. Okay, I think that's good enough right there. And it probably, yep, just comes right off. The only real reason it came off so easy is because we cut that wire underneath it before we let it dry, remember? Now this is your perfectly circular ring that you made on the wheel. Congratulations! I mean, hold on, we're not done yet though. You don't have to, but at this point I like to turn this over and trim the back side to make it perfectly round because some of the stuff that I like to do with this is decorational and it doesn't really count as a decoration or a good piece of artwork if only one side is presentable and the other side is not. The easiest way to do this is to just flip it over and trim it like a normal pot. It actually takes a very small amount of trimming, and afterwards, of course, I always get my sponge and just make sure it's nice and smooth. You see? There you go. Nice and trimmed. Now that this ring is semi-dry and nice and cleaned up, you can essentially cut it up and use it however you want. Potter tip! I personally like to leave it a little bit wet simply because I can morph it a little bit better that way, and sometimes you can make some really creative stuff out of it if you morph it correctly. For example, You can make little twisties out of it like this and attach it to the side of a cup to use as a handle. You can cut it off at a little angle right here and use it as a decorative piece to the head of your pots. You can add that ring of clay any way you like to make a nice aesthetic to any pot that you have. See this is just a circle until I add something nice and aesthetic to it. It looks a little bit like if your Uncle Tom became a samurai but he was way too fat to actually fight so he's just a round blob now. And as I mentioned before, if you keep it a little bit soft you can essentially morph it into any shape you want. You could put it into a little circle like this. You can turn it upside down and make a little handle with it. I've even used this as a beak a couple times on a couple sculptural pieces that come off as birds. You just put it right on the side and squish this together and it kind of makes a little beak for you. I think I'm going to leave it like this. I kind of like this right here. And as I mentioned before, this is the exact way that I create my decorative lidded pieces just like this. I simply make this circle and then I modify it to whatever I want it to look like. I've even been known to scrunch this up just like this, cut off little pieces, and use it as kind of a handle for a lot of my cups. This is technically a sculptor's technique, but if I'm going to make a circle out of clay, I'm going to use the thing that literally spins around in a circle. Well, thank you Dirty Potters for joining me today. If you'd like to see any of my artwork, the links are always down below for your beautiful Potter eyes to see. And if you want to join the Facebook or the new Discord community, those links are always down below for you as well. There's tons of helpful Potters that are always willing to give some really helpful advice. But thank you guys for joining me today, and I will see you Dirty Potters next week. Put, put a little ball right there, you know? You know, you know what I'm talking about. You, you know what I'm talking about.